Tonight, uh, what I want to do is I want to address the fact that we've been having some serious um, audio issues along with the server issues that we've been experiencing uh, since uh, we had a power surge that was too much for our UPSs and surge suppressors to handle. Uh, unfortunately, we know that, uh, that my microphone, what I, what I normally use is, uh, let's see if I can get it out here. <clears throat> what I normally use is this, this guy. So it's an uh, you know, eighth inch plugged into a quarter inch adapter into the console. And it's uh, a powered microphone lapel. It was uh, about $50 to buy, which is not an overly expensive microphone. It was uh, to g get us through because we had uh, some problems before. So we thought, hey, going wired would be a great idea because then we won't have to deal with static. And then going wired meant that this one was plugged in when we got the surge, unfortunately. So, and that was going through a uh, Studio Projects VTB1 V-Series uh, tube amp for the pre. And uh, that is having issues as well. But I haven't mentioned that on the air because it... Uh, it, we we rarely use that because we do have a phantom power amp uh, like a pre in the uh, in the um, Tapco mixer that we use, which is a Tapco Mix 220FX, which was a hand-me-down from my band. This microphone is baked, unfortunately. This is the one that I was using. So then, um, as you know, Eric hasn't been around, and Eric hasn't been around because of the fact that, uh, unfortunately, we, we don't have the capacity at this point to, to have more than the, the two people on the desk here. Two reasons. One is because I'm actually having to use Eric's, what was Eric's microphone, uh, because we only have three microphones. Now we're down to two. And after this week, I think, in all honesty, I think we need to um, we need to retire uh, what was Eric's microphone. I don't know if it if the receiver got zapped along with everything else, but uh, I think this week really showed that uh, it had uh, that it has problems that weren't there before. Same documents. So that's one reason you might partition it that way. But for the average user, I would say take up the whole drive if this is going to be your main operating system. Uh, and then that just gives you all the space for that drive. There's a second part. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to upgrade with a fresh install was the best way not to lose my applications and settings I installed. So that's why I think that it might have been related. It's it's one of those things where you know we'll we'll find little things here and there that are that are failing uh, after a few weeks of time. The other reason that Eric hasn't been able to be here is because the server got not fried but uh, damaged. To the, to the degree that it crashes severely if, uh, and you'll remember, I think it was episode 185 or 186 that it happened. Super cool. <laughs> that was an <laughs> awesome thing to have happen right there. Gang, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to cut our losses tonight. Aww. We've never had a show where it's like, where this has been the way it's been. John's just like, yeah, this has never happened before. <laughs> I now have five times the amount of splicing to do <laughs> at the end of the night, and it's not going to come together into a full one-hour show. It's never happened before, but uh, I think we're going to pick up our series uh, where we left off there uh, next week. I think this is the best thing to do, and we're going to take some time this weekend and try to get to the bottom of what's going on here. Server crashes severely if uh, we put too much of a load on it. It's, n it's, it's a new problem, and uh, it didn't exist before. And uh, because everything's solid state in that computer, we built it to hopefully last. And it has done really well for us. I've got to admit, we've had it for, uh, we've been using that server for since pretty much since I started the show. Not when we first started, because when we first started, it was just me and a webcam. But when we started upgrading and getting into uh, real broadcasting, that's when, uh, that's when I got that server and built that. So, so it's done well for us, but it's, it's at end of life. And, so that said, because of that problem, we cannot run more than one camera off of that computer. Actually, we're very fortunate that 
uh, we're still able to do a camera and Skype uh, so that Hillary can get on. Um, and we haven't had too much trouble there, but, uh, but we're still trying to make do, trying to keep broadcasting even though uh, we've got hardware that is either failing or failed. So, um, so that's where the fundraising comes in and, and we're hoping that uh, the viewers will stand by us and I know a lot of viewers have already. And, um, and we're very, very thankful for that. Because really, um, being that we're a free show, I don't talk too much about it on the on the air because you know it's it's one of those things, right? We're we're f we provide the service free. We always have tried to do that, and we always will. Um, but when an expense like that comes up, like the time that we were somebody broke into the studio and stole a bunch of equipment, it was amazing that uh, the viewers came together and helped us replace that. And now with the surge, we don't have any money put aside for for this kind of thing. It's like. So what happens is, is we either work at half capacity and try to make do, but my fear when we do that is that, uh, that then we, we tend to lose some of our loyal viewers. Because not everybody understands that, oh, well, we've got audio problems tonight. Well, that's because we got hit by a power surge and we don't have the money in the bank to replace all the equipment quickly. So every donation that comes in really, really helps. Uh, Zabata in the chat room saying that it obviously takes money to, to run the show, and it sure does. A lot of times we're able to, you know, I'm able to take care of it myself um, from my day job, basically. And, and the way that I'm able to do that is because we run, you know, we piggyback it on our home services, so we've got our internet connection. We would need an internet connection anyway, so, uh, so it's not a big deal. So we're able to, to do that. But uh, there are obvious other expenses, especially when something like this happens. So, so tonight what I want to look at, uh, I stopped at the local Music Pro store and, he, and I was trying to find out, you know, what can we do? And uh, they showed me some headset microphones um, to, to try to figure out how, how we can get uh, beyond this problem of the fact that our microphones are failing and, and we did a whole show with terrible sound and static and... and nothing that could be done about it. So um, so the first thing that I did, you've got, uh, well you've seen this guy, this is my Rode NT1. This again was, uh, this was actually a hand-me-down from my radio days. It sat on my desk as a decoration. I uh, got it serviced so that it would work and then uh, gave it to my band and my band used it for recording our CDs. And then since then it's really been you know, I use it whenever I record music, um, like we recorded the Tuesday song. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, gonna do a show on Tuesday. Everybody's looking forward to the tech show, tech show. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, gonna do a show on Tuesday. Everybody's looking forward to our tech show. Cardigan, cardigan, yeah. Cardigan, cardigan, yeah. So what I did pick up, though, they were able to uh, give me a, a mic clip, which was they don't they didn't have them for sale. They but they had it uh, as a part of a bundle, so they they let me take that. So this is going this would work with the NT1, which is cool. So that's how that is. Let's see. There we go. Rode NT1, fantastic microphone for recording. But the pattern on this, the polar pattern, is like that. And it's like that. So what that means is, if we use this, probably sound okay. We're going to have to have it a fair bit back because you don't want it to absorb too much of the shot. It's, it's big. You don't want it in front of you like this, which would get a lot of pops. And then... If you're going to do that, then you get into this kind of thing. So how would you like a show where we're talking like that? It just doesn't work. So the only thing that we could do would be to you know, lower this like that, out of the camera shot a little bit, so that you can't really see it. Problem with that is that, uh, like I say, the, the polar pattern on this is so wide that it's going to pick up 
practically anything. So if the kids are making noise upstairs, this will pick it up clearly. It's a fantastic microphone for that kind of stuff, but it's not what you want when you're broadcasting. So like for that. So we'll give that a test. I'll show you how much cleaner that is than these lapels. The lapels, this lapel has nice sound when it works. This again was something that uh, we actually bought it off of a church. It was used. They had upgraded their mics to headsets. And I should say they, they did talk to me about headsets at the, at the store. They're uh, $160 each. No, $130 each, pardon me, for an Apex headset. But you need a $30 adapter to make it so that it will work on a plugged console as opposed to a wireless transmitter. So, so you're looking at $160 per headset times two for me and Krista or me and Hillary or me and Eric. Uh, plus one more for the newsroom, so we're looking at a lot of money. So, uh, which doesn't sound too bad, but that's that's a fair amount. So, um, then they talked to me about a, a shotgun. So we're going to look at that in just a minute. But I'll show you what uh, what the NT1 sounds like. <clears throat> Got to turn on phantom power and let it charge up. you like this. Okay, here we go. Check, check. That's the uh, Rode NT1. And as you can tell, it has much, much better sound than, uh, than say, the lapels, which uh, don't have that full body sound. Problem with this is it picks up everything in the room, picks up everything from upstairs. If I tap on the desk, you're going to, you know, you're going to hear stuff especially if it's low. So realistically, up here, it's great. So when we're recording in the studio or something, it's fantastic. Um, if it was down here, not so sure. We'll probably get a lot of, you know, so what does that sound like? Check, 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 check. If I turn it up, so I'm going to have to increase the input. Check, check. Which at that point, I think we probably get quite a bit of background noise if we're you know, typing or whatever or anything like that, but especially if there's noise upstairs or elsewhere in the house, uh, people clearing their throat that are behind the scenes, things like that, could be a problem. Um, and certainly doesn't work well with, with pops and stuff if, if they occur, which they wouldn't if it was down there. Uh, sounds a bit tinny, Zabata says, if I move it down to the desk. It sounds like a radio show now, they say. Here's the lapel. Uh, Boom. Lapel. And Rode NT1. How do you like that? You're watching Category 5 Technology TV. Lovely, isn't it? Gonna kill the phantom power. <clears throat> so with all that discussion... Uh, with the guys over at Music Pro. <clears throat> uh, what they did put me on to was, I, I said, well, what about a shotgun? Would that be the, the solution? And I guess the, the risk that you run with a shotgun mic is that you might need one per person again. The price on this, though, is only 149 which is uh, really pretty, pretty good if we don't have to do multiple microphones. That would save much over doing like the headset route. And here's what I'm thinking. We've got the curtain behind us, so we're not going to, that's going to absorb a lot of the ambient noise, which the microphone, if it was pointed at us because it's directional, would pick up generally. If there was a wall there, I'd be concerned. I am looking for, Zabata's wondering if we're looking for a permanent solution or um, if this is just temporary. Um, I, I'd love to find a per permanent solution we uh, quite often have to, um, how do you say, like find interim steps. Like right now we're in a very temporary position because we don't know what, how we're going to run the show without a server. <laughs> so as far as microphones go, if I can find a permanent solution that's only 149 bucks, then, then that's the, the best thing. Like that's fantastic. But that's why I want to test it and see what you think, like if it's, if it's actually going to be a solution. Here's what I think about this. It's 
directional. It's designed for distance, so we can put it behind the camera and it will pick us up in front of the camera, apparently clearly. It has phantom power ability, which means it can be powered by our console, our mixer, instead of a battery. So that rules out the chance that you know batteries could die halfway through a show, which we've had happen before. Uh, in which case the microphone goes dead or becomes un uh, like you just can't hear it. So the kit looks pretty good it, it, for what it is. 140. What did I say? 149 bucks. In the kit is the just a, a cheap windsock, but it is molded for this particular mic. So it's so that's a good thing if we ever want to shoot outside. Um, and because we can put a battery in this, and because our HD camera supports plugging in a microphone, uh, we'd be able to do that kind of thing on location stuff. I, I kind of Im imagine that that would be really nice. Comes with a mic clip. Wow. Power demand is so low that a premium battery can provide a thousand hours of continuous service. That's wild. So this battery probably isn't dead. That would be really nice if we were to ever get outside of the studio and do something outside. Let's see how it sounds. Check, 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 check. Wow, that is directional. Check, check. I think. Hey. Can you guys hear that? Quiet, eh? All right, let's see. Normal mode. That's normal mode. Tella, Tella. Hey, hey. Check one, two. Check, check. Phantom's on. Increase the gain. Check, 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 check. Wow, that's really soft. Frighteningly. Tella. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. I'm a little bit afraid of how much gain I've had to put there. Check, 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 check. Let's see if it's any different with a battery instead of phantom power. <clears throat> check, check, check. Okay, this is my lapel, just so you know. I had to uh, put that up more than twice the volume of what we normally have my lapel at. Just there. Yeah, as far as the gain goes on the board. Let's see if it's any better with the battery instead of phantom power. Check. This is this one. Test, test. Okay, that's in normal mode. Here's in Tela. Tela, 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 Tela. But it, it, it does scare me that I'm up at zero decibels and uh, I'm holding this right up to my face. Sounds not very good. How about now? Check, check. I don't know how long this battery has been running for, so we can switch back to Phantom. Okay, check, 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 check. This is in normal mode. Okay, switching back to my lapel. Remind me to switch back. I can take the battery out. Go back to Phantom power, because that's how I'd want to run it anyway. <clears throat> Why is it so quiet? It has very, very little oomph behind it. I'm going to try it in a, in a different channel on my board. Just in case it's a bad channel. We want to rule that out. This is in channel 2. And I'm just turning on that mic. Oh, I don't have Phantom on yet, so... Okay, I'm going to mute my lapel. Check, 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 check. That's in normal mode. Check, 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 check. Telemode, telemode, and a little further away than it was. Okay, I'm gonna actually put this on the uh, on the boom. Ew, they say. See, I can't hear it. Maybe what I'll do. Hold on. Check, 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 check. 
check, 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 check. Oh, that's got a lot more bass. This would do very nicely. And then it, in Tella, it goes very tinny. Interesting. Okay. This is CNN. Just for you. Okay, I'm back on the lapel. I'll put the clip on here. <clears throat> this is my boom, which also was a hand-me-down from my band. Our band has come in handy. I think I only sold three CDs, but uh, it's, all, it's all good. It's because I let people download my CD for free. What was I thinking? Nobody will buy it if you give it away for free, Robbie. That's the lesson that I should have learned, but obviously didn't. <laughs> okay, that's on. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to try to keep this as realistic as possible. And we're going to put this approximately where it would be if we were on the air. <clears throat> I think we're going to have to go uh, upward. One of the things I want to try to avoid is uh, getting keystrokes and things. Um, let's just pretend we're going to go like... say that would be about center on uh, co-host and I. I've set that. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Not a lot of oomph there at all. Check, check. Check, check. That's a at way I would never put my, that's 10 decibels. Now I'm in tele mode at zero decibels. Much, much difference uh, as far as how much power I need to put into it. Here I am at 10, which is where I was there just a moment ago. Check, check. Check, 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 check. Oh, that's terrible. Check, check. You can hear better, but it is ambient and room noise and Mech. Sounds bad. Normal mode. Normal mode at plus 10 decibels. Check, check. Way too low even at that. Yeah, that's no good. How close do they want this thing to be to us? It doesn't... There, there's no real... You know, all this talk of... I'll turn back on my lapel, just so you can actually hear me. There's no talk about, you know, how close do they want this to your face? This is a microphone that'll perform well in any situation. How about this one? Can I mount it in a boom mic fashion hanging straight above your head? Let's give it a try. And I don't care that it's in the shot right now because we can always move it if it does tend to work. My fear with this is we're going to pick up every keystroke, we're going to pick up every cup being set down all that stuff. I don't want that. If we can avoid it. Oh, 
I'll leave it in normal mode for the start. This is right above our head. That's normal mode. Check, 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 check. Can't even hear me. <clears throat> That's telemode. Check, check. You get the volume that way, but that sounds terrible. Sounds better than what? Sounds horrible. Headset would be a better idea, Zabata thinks. More expensive. I was really thinking that this would work and hoping that this would work. Any other ideas? I can try going at it from a different angle. Getting, getting in, switching over to my lapel. Getting in uh, closer. Let's do this. Just approach it from a different uh, position altogether. I think that's uh, it's just going to be too narrow of a, of a field, I think. Uh, of a polar field. Hello. Check. Check. That's so quiet in normal mode. If I were right in front of it, it'd probably be better. If I'm over here, it's still pretty... That's pretty good how focused it is, but that's not necessarily what I want. I want it a little bit wide. Uh, so you can kind of hear where it is. This is in the tele mode. Check, 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 check. You can hear everything. Check, 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 check. <whistles> Still sounds pretty tinny even up this close. <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking, like, is there anything that we can do with this? We're looking at a, a shotgun mic to try to... mic. Just two people. Just two people. That's all we need. Oh, we can do heart. We can boost as much as you want, Zabata. We've got a uh, uh, Ultramizer Pro compressor, but the more you, comp you the more you do that, the more noise we're going to be getting. Because you're going to you're going to be maximizing the background noise just as much as the foreground. Here I am in normal. There I am at plus ten, and you hear how much noise there is. What's that noise? It's like me. It's terrible. And that's coming right off the mic channel. Watch what happens. Noise. This is nasty. Yet my voice doesn't seem booming. It doesn't seem loud. This is a long shot. <clears throat> this is the XLR cable that came with the Apex, which is just a feels like a low grade cheap cable. I'm going to go into exactly the same port and do all that. Just one sec. Sorry. My darling wife is like, what are you doing? Who are you talking to? Okay. So I'm on a different cable now. Re-enable phantom power. 
and switch. No difference. Hear me. This is the lapel. I'm talking on the uh, apex, but I'm going to move the lapel. Here it is. I'm going to put it on the apex. So it's the same distance. I'm going to switch. There it is. Figure that out. Back to the apex. Hello. Back to my lapel, which is clipped onto the apex. The shotgun mic, which is supposed to give me better sound. <sighs> well, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of the Apex 175? There's the picture of it being used in a professional studio, but it's a drawing. I don't think it's ever actually been used in a professional studio. If Apex is watching, dude, tell me what's up. Seriously. Back to my lapel, my lapel which is clipped onto the apex. Unreal. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> See what I mean? This mic sounds good when it works. It's great. But it's a cheap microphone. I don't know who Telex is. I don't... It's just a cheap mic that uh, was... We got second hand and it was a... Uh, fair price. Guys, I'm very, uh, I was really hoping, you know, really hoping. I thought that could work. And I'm going to be disappointed to take it back to them and say, you know what, this is terrible. Apex 175. Now, Rode makes some boom microphones. And we all know that Rode make fantastic microphones, which we're about to experience because I've given up on the Apex. I think you understand why. I'm going to try the Rode NT1, which is not made for this application, but it can't be worse than the Apex. I'll just use, uh, well, I'll use my mic cable. I left phantom power on. I haven't, well, I haven't unplugged the Apex yet anyways. So it's okay. There we go. <coughs> and the uh, other end of my cable isn't plugged in. <coughs> Meep is saying, you know, get a really good uh, rifle mic and test it against this. And definitely like one of the road mics or something, but they wouldn't lend me one. Understandably so. Said they're worth too much money. But that said, could we afford a road mic? I don't think so. To be, just to be honest with you, because um, you know, like I, when I saw this at 145 bucks, I was very hopeful because it's like, well, there's our opportunity. There it is. Because uh, 145 or 149 bucks, that sounds cheap. And <laughs> that w that means that that was that was a really good pun, or something, or works on two levels, right? Sounds cheap. It sure does. <clears throat> now this is going to have a much wider um, pattern. It's going to have to be more in the center. Enter the Rode NT1. 
check one, two, check one, two, check, check, check. Much wider pattern. Lots of thump. Lots of bass. <clears throat> what do we do? That sounds not half bad. This is just the Rode NT1 plugged in right there. It is fantastically better than this. Rightly so. It's a more expensive mic, but it's not made for this. This is supposed to be made for this. It picks up a lot of noise. It's very wide. What do you do, right? Let's try something. Check. Check one, two, check one, two, check, check. It's inevitable. Check one, two. Hello. Hello. And it's right in our face. It's in the way of the camera. Realistically, we can't put it there. Let's be realistic and put it where it can go. So that's pointed down at me. Hello. 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 Which it loses that full body sound. I don't like having such a big item in the shot. But probably sound pretty nice for what it is. <clears throat> There's an NT1 in the shot. <laughs> Not acceptable like that. And we can't get a tabletop because that'll pick up so much noise. Even that is pretty bad. Hello. If I sit like this, then we'll sound really good. I guess we could all kind of crowd around this. The delay is driving me nuts. <laughs> How can we get that sound without a big old microphone in my face and having to get Krista to get in there too? It's discouraging, you know? Hmm. See the difference? If I'm here, it's grand. Back here, not quite so much. Now you know what my voice really sounds like. <laughs> so you know, there's about a two second delay in my headphones so that it's really, really confusing when I talk. Sounds great if it's in my face. I love this mic, but it's not great for TV. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. If you have any suggestions, email me live at category5.tv or tweet me, Robbie Ferguson. It's down at the bottom there. Uh, that'd be great. Hopefully we'll come up with something before our show, which broadcasts live on Tuesday night. Uh, the lapel that I'm using tonight, while it has sounded good tonight, it is inconsistent and unreliable, which unfortunately for live broadcasting is not something that we can risk any longer. We have to come up with a solution. Tonight it's worked well, this lapel. Right now I'm on the road. <laughs> that sounds cool. I'm on the road NT1. But uh, this past Tuesday, if you want to see it, go to our website, category5.tv, uh, episode number 189, and you'll hear what I mean about the microphone being unreliable. It was unbearable. So please let me know your suggestions. Thanks.